Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today is a monumental video for my series about home batteries and, well, solar panels included. Uh, the install is done, Sentera has done a fantastic job, and I'm here to tell you about the installation process, some of the things I like and don't like. Of course, we'll talk about the actual price, what I installed in the end, because there was a few changes since the last video, and then I'm gonna show you some stats about what's been happening for the last 23 days because that's how long I've had the system running so far and bit of caveats there's been a lot of raining days but it's not the caveat that you would expect so big thanks to you for watching and supporting the channel if you are new and haven't subscribed then make sure you do because there will be more videos and the next video that's coming out will be the two monthly or the next bill from Synergy here in Western Australia. So we'll see what the actual dollar figures are, but I'm gonna give you a bit of a sample. So let's get started by rolling the intro. Now I'm gonna start with the installation. It took three days. Now that is actually a long time because it was across nearly eight days. And the reason being is I had some solar panels installed. So I already had 6.6 .6 kilowatts. I got another 6.6 .6 roughly installed. That meant that there was lots of work done on the roof, which meant if it rained, ah, that was a bit of a problem. That's exactly what happened on the second day, which the install should have been finished on the second day. The rains basically got the team to go home, <laughs> which is okay. They came back for the third day, finished installing all the panels and connecting everything. The job was very well done. I was impressed. They attended to all my requests, specifically disconnecting my Tesla charger from the battery system or in solar system. I wanted it to be fully on grid because I do have a video coming up about adding a DC charger from the solar and battery system. So I guess subscribe if you're interested in that. And of course the location, I want it to be as far away from cars because I don't want it hitting. There are bollards installed. And the last one being, well, make it look nice. And this kind of goes into some of the, I guess, things that I didn't really expect during the installation process. And that is the amount of conduits and cables that are kind of sticking out now. Now, while it is really nicely set in place and sort of covered, there is just a lot of stuff. Stuff. You've got the battery pack plus the actual battery module, the controller, then you have the inverter and then you have the backup module, which all in all takes up a lot of space in a garage. So I've got 25 kilowatt hours of battery and they are in five modules of five kilowatt hours. Now here's the important thing to note. Because of the way the GrowWatt APX battery system works, you only have about 22.5 kilowatt hours usable. But in fact, it's a little bit worse. There is another 10% that doesn't get used because the system is set not to discharge lower than 10%. So let's round it off to 20 kilowatt hours of actual usable, which means that I had a little bit of a gap at around 6 a.m. where I have to draw from the grid if I turn on my aircon when and it's really cold before the sun comes out during the winter and autumn months. So that is something we'll talk about in a little while. Now, the reason I chose GrowWatt is I had a GrowWatt inverted in the past and it worked really well. It was working all the way till they took it off the wall to replace it with this one. And also the support. Here in Western Australia, Sentara has been around for nearly 16 years, which means that warranty from these guys, well, I'm hoping it's gonna last for the, at least the next 10 years. Then, of course, GrowWatt is on the cheaper side. I didn't really wanna spend a lot of money. I know people say just get Sig Energy or other brands or Tesla brands, but I don't wanna spend that much money on a battery system. This is a way to reduce your costs. And if you make a massive upfront cost, that's not gonna have a good payback period. And we'll talk about that in the following video, but today I'll give you a flavor of that. Massive change that I had since the last time I did this video was that we added a 10 kilowatt inverter or upgraded it from five to 10, which really helps with when you go off grid or the grid goes down and you've got your backup system going at 10 kilowatts that completely covers my house because I also have a gas stove and gas water. So I'm not really worried about it. And according to the installer, the grow watt inverter is unbalanced, which means each phase, because we have a three phase home here, can push 10 kilowatts, depending on obviously which phase is pulling what. So you can do the maximum per phase, meaning that if you have part of the house on one phase and there's like a, let's say a toaster and a kettle pulling 
lots and lots of kilowatts, then it won't trip anything, first of all, and you'll still be using your battery rather than pulling from the grid to feed it back if your single phase is limited to 1.3 or whatever might be the limit based on the total of your inverter. So this is really good now. I have not been able to find any actual documentation to specify that, but the installer said that's the way he set it up, that's the way he's done it every time, and it works like this every time. Now, do you trust an electrician who's been installing the systems, or do you trust documentation that doesn't exist? Make up your mind. But it works, right? I'm not pulling from the grid when I run lots of stuff in the kitchen. So the GrowWatt system is affordable, but as mentioned, there's a couple of boxes on the wall that you know makes it a little bit more janky. But it does also mean that if anything breaks, only one of those things needs to be replaced, and you don't need to replace the whole thing or whole module, even though one thing in the module breaks. Let's say you've got an inverter combo, then you just replace the inverter, not the backup system, and so on. So it could be a little bit easier to replace. The app is pretty average, but the web page, the server side is amazing and I've been using that more often than the app. The app is just to check how much battery I have left at the night. And it also integrates with Home Assistant, which I have running. And the Home Assistant is, look, all I wanted it to do is tell me how many hours I have left on battery during the night. That's all I really wanted to, to have because all the other information is in the app and the web. The next thing is grow what's limitation. It is missing a three phase backup. So the backup is only for a single phase. And the way my home is wired up is that the whole house is pretty much gonna stay up except the aircon. But the fact that I can cook and clean and use the house as is without the aircon, I'm okay with that. The other thing is uh, GrowWatt requires an internet connection to maintain the warranty. That's obviously a concern for some, prefer not to, but here we are. That does mean that they also have monitoring and systems and I can access it remotely, which is good. And there's no integration with third party chargers like the Tesla charger. That's more fault of Tesla, not necessarily the grower. Now let's talk about the things I like because I really like the affordability of this system. And if you saw an interview with Dean from Sentera, uh, links below, uh, he mentioned that the GrowWatt system is on the affordable side, but it is a premium offering. And that's exactly what I found in my research. GrowWatt system in the specification is very premium, apart from the three phase backup. Now, the other thing is the inverter is really interesting, very powerful, but can oversize up to 200% with your solar panels. If you are getting 20 kilowatt hours of battery, I recommend getting new panels or more panels like I did. And my panels weren't that old anyway, and adding more was not a problem. That meant that during the day, I'm generating so much more power and utilizing the power at the same time while charging the battery, which means that when I go into the evening, even on an overcast day, I'm at 100% battery. And the important part is my battery is generally full by the time it gets to midday and midday is peak sun. If you are wanting to add more kilowatt hours to your system, make sure to get it at once because you only get one go at the rebate. And this is the APX S2 series. A lot of comments in past videos were made, oh, grow it has terrible warranty. This is the latest version. As far as I was told, especially the inverter, it was only two months on the market. If you actually look at the specs of the systems you get now, very different from the past. Things are changing so quickly in the home battery world that you can see for yourself every day there's something new. So let's get into the performance. First of all, I wanna share with you how much energy was consumed and how much I exported to the grid. Because yes, the system still exports to the grid at 1.5 kilowatts. So it's not 5.1 kilowatts per phase, it's a maximum of 1.5 kilowatts out to the grid. And over the last 23 days, I generated 115 kilowatt hours to the grid. And if I were to be paid for that, which I'm not because I have a 10 kilowatt system, you know, times two cents, it's not a lot. And this is the stuff that is being wasted because my battery is, well, full and then it goes out to the grid. And this is during pretty rainy months in August, September, uh, going now into October. So my most recent bill was $696.12. This bill came in about two weeks before the battery got installed. So we're roughly gonna get a pretty good estimate on the next bill of how much savings in total there was. But this is for a home with 
two kids who have a heater in each of the room. We don't skimp on making them comfortable. And we've got an air con during summer months that we will use, of course, to keep comfortable at home. Uh, we've got service computers. And so we use a lot of power. The water is gas and the stovetop is also gas. So something that might change in the future, but for now, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, onto the most important part. Because the battery lasts mostly through the night, and during the day, I'm only using solar power. Most of the time, we're using a lot more power during the day, but at night, we'll turn on, let's say, the dryer. We're cooking and microwaving and all that sort of stuff. So once the sun goes down, we're fully on battery power, and 98% of all the days out of those 23 days, we had 100% going into the night. There was one day that we didn't. It was just raining all day, and it only charged up to about 40% or so. So, so, <laughs> That means that I had to import from the grid for the past 23 days for the house, of course, excluding the car because the car is disconnected from the battery system and the solar system. We had to import 33.4 kilowatt hours from the grid for the past 23 days. So that accounts to, and because I'm on the EV time of day tariff charge, it only happened in the mornings between 5.30 a.m. and about 6.30 a.m. for about an hour when we turn the aircon to heat. It really smashes the battery to that 10% limit and then pulls from grid. So at 33.4 kilowatt hours and at this EV time of day saving, which is only 23 cents per kilowatt hour, we spent $7.91 for 23 days after getting the battery. So let's round things off because $7.91 for 23 days is fantastic, but let's just round it off and say it's $10 per month that it's gonna cost me all year around to just top up in the mornings. So let's do some quick math. My bill recently was $696. This isn't the normal bill. It just one of those months that we used a lot more power. So I really want to round this off to 660. And the reason being is because $30 of that per month, so $60 every two month bill is actually just the connection charge, which leaves us with $60. You can't get away with that $60 fee. So we have $600 across two months, divide that by two, we get ourselves $300 a month in actual costs of power. Now, I'm gonna take away the electric vehicle charging. I know it's about $47 per month, and I'm gonna round that off to, let's say 60, because you, know, you never know how much you're gonna drive more in that month versus a month where you don't drive as much. So let's say it's 60, which leaves us with $240. Now, let's take away that $10 which is the cost of a monthly charge up during those odd hours where the battery's not really running. So that's $230, which is the possible amount I can actually save. Now, then we have the plenty loan, which again reduces our potential savings per month by about $83. Let's round that off to $90. So that leaves us with $140. That means every month I'm better off by $140. So now the cost of the system is 15,930, which is fairly substantial in itself. We've got the $10,000 on the loan, which is really nice, it's interest free, and there's also no account fees. So that itself is already included in this cost that will pay itself down over the 10 years. So the real cost we have left is this 5,930. So I'm gonna amortize that across the 10 year period of the loan. So if we divide 5,930 by 10 years and then by 12 months, we get ourselves $49.50 cents per month on top of that, which leaves us with, let's just round that off to uh, $50 for easy math. That means that every month I'm actually going to be better off by 90 Australian dollars, which is not too shabby. That's pretty much an internet subscription at this rate, which you're already paying $90. I like it. So at 12 months, that is $1,000 and $80. And after 10 years, of course, the math ends up being at $10,000 and 800. That is the total benefit that we'll receive. Now, none of this 
takes into account the fact that power prices are going to go way up. And so my actual value is gonna keep going up. This $90 and this payback period will go back through. Now, ultimately what I've done here is I've calculated across the 10 years, the warranty period, not necessarily the actual like payback period of what it takes pays itself back in three years. So let's quickly calculate what that payback period is. If it's $15,930 for the battery, we're gonna divide it by the amount that we save per month in power minus the EV cost. So let's say EV is still $60 and the $10 to top up the power every month for that little bit in the morning that misses, that's $70. So we're only gonna be saving $200 and $30 every month. So let's just divide 15,930 by 230 and we roughly get 69.2 months, but basically we wanna know a rounded number. So let's say it's 70 months to pay back divided by 12. The payback period is 5.8 years. So let's just call it six year payback period. So what can you expect in the next couple of videos? Well, we've got a DC charger video coming up. I'm thinking about doing a video what it's like to upgrade a system and add more batteries. That might be interesting. Let me know in the comments below. And then lastly, I've got a whole bunch of projects with different battery brands installing at different people's houses. So we're gonna get a pretty nice and realistic view of what's happening with the battery systems across. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, and if you're new, subscribe. Friends, let me know what you guys think below. The installation was fantastic. Thank you very much to Sentera for bearing with me. I had so many questions. I annoyed them a lot and called and emailed them all the time, just trying to learn and research. And I'm so happy to have been able to share all this information with you guys. We're gonna do another big video that's more around the numbers very soon when the following bill comes in. But I am absolutely stoked. <laughs> $7.91 for 23 days of power. <laughs> that's, that's pretty intense. And it's a system, I, I don't have to do anything. There's no cranks to pull. It's just sitting there doing its thing when the sun is out and saves the battery for the night. So to that question, the sun doesn't shine at night? No, no it doesn't. But you know what works at night? Batteries. So take the energy from the day, basically transfer it to the night. Friends, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one and make sure you like and subscribe. Bye!